What's up everybody, welcome to Teach Go High Level. My name is Eric and today we're talking about building custom dashboards. I'm gonna walk through some of the things that you can add to a dashboard and all the developments that have been created there by Go High Level. So let's dive in. So you're gonna go to your dashboard section. Now each Go High Level account comes with like a default built shell sample data one, okay? In fact, if your account's so new and you're watching this, you might have sample data in there. Now the dashboard pulls information from all the other areas of the software. So you can have kind of a, an overview or a dashboard to tell you everything going on in your business. Now. A dashboard is only as good as the data keeping in all the other sections. So for example, if you're gonna look at opportunity statistics, make sure your opportunities pipeline data is clean, i.e. you're staying on top of your leads and marking them won and lost and abandoned and all those sorts of things. Because if you're not doing that, the data in is not gonna be good. So the data out is gonna be really bad. Clean data in, clean data out, okay? Now let's say you wanted to track certain things, okay? So for example, I wanna have one that's just about my marketing. Now, when you go to create a new one, and as you can see how I did that there, you're gonna click right up here at the top and go new dashboard, add a dashboard. Now, if you're not able to do that, that means that you don't have the necessary permission settings to do that. So talk to your administrator. Now, you can start with a blank one. You can clone from an existing dashboard. So let's say you already have one you built after watching this video the first time, but you wanna do the same thing, but you wanna change some of the things on the board, totally fine. But then they also now have a library that you can go through of templates. Now, it's very light right now, but eventually, Go High Level is really good for crowdsourcing best practices. So as time goes on, people will start publishing templates that you can use. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the ones here. Let's do call tracking. This is gonna be pre-built for you and it'll give you an overview of it and what it tracks. So we're gonna hit continue and it's gonna add this template, okay? And I'm gonna show you all the different things with that, make sure it's set up properly. So here, they've already made it look all nice and everything. So we have total calls. I haven't done any calls through this dummy account. Answered versus missed calls. If you had that, it would show total incoming, outgoing, first time calls, and then your weekly call trend. Performance, you know, how long were your outgoing calls, your ingoing calls, your averages, total calls logged by user, average response time. So if you're running like a call center or you have multiple people on the phone for your business, this would be a super helpful dashboard on there. Whereas you don't want it confused with all your marketing stuff. So you can have a marketing dashboard and a call dashboard or a sales dashboard. There's all sorts of dashboards you can build. Now, let's say you wanna make one that has a couple of different things from each element. So we're gonna add a new dashboard and we're gonna start from blank, okay? And I'm gonna call this the Teach Go High Level Demo. Now, do we want this to be private just to me or share it with other team members? I'm gonna make it shareable. Now, you have to delineate who gets access, right? Do I want my agency users, so the people over me to see it, admins to see it only, or account users, okay? So we can give them full edit or view along the way. So account users, we're gonna say that they can view it. The most lowest level of permissions you give, it goes all the way up, right? So you can't say, I only want this, this, and this. If you do it in that order, it's gonna always pipe it up to the top because if the lowest guy has access, the top guy has access. Same vice versa, so it's gonna parity along, okay? Let's say I wanna give everybody view access and above, right? So we can say, all right, lowest guy can view and admins can edit, okay? See how I gave the agency at edit? So just keep that in mind when you're sharing it. So we're gonna hit confirm. All right, now it tells you, you know, track what's most important to you. We're going to add a widget manually, okay? Now there's tons of widgets and I'm not gonna go through each one, but it breaks it up into different categories, okay? So the first thing to realize is you have different chart types. So you have numeric, which will show a number, pie graph, you have a line graph, a bar graph, a horizontal bar graph, and then you have table. Now table's super complex, and those of you that need that, you're gonna understand and know how to use it. This is more generic in this video. Within that, so you first pick, okay, what kind of chart do I wanna show? Then what data do I wanna get in there? Now, that's the second part here. We have contact data, appointment data, opportunity data, visitor data, email data, call data, 
conversations, payment, and there's some general ones, okay? So what you're trying to track will be in one of these. So like, let's say contacts, you can have a contact count, contact by source, medium. So these are really important to your marketing people. Tags, so if there's certain tags you have for certain customer types, contacts by user. So let's say you have account reps for certain contacts and you wanna see how many accounts that someone is managing, again, you need to kind of think outside the box. Like, what am I trying to track here? Am I trying to see, okay, I want to see how many account reps that I have. Okay, so I need to count users. Okay, I want to see how many accounts that they're managing because if Jim has 100 and Sally has 50, we're definitely going to need to get Sally's numbers up. So it's not going to give you the answer, but if you know what you're trying to track and maybe what it's assigned to, this will help you narrow it down. So let's just say contacts by source. We're going to take that one and there's some advanced settings, but for now, we can do session source, activity, country, again. There's so many different ways to skin this that you're going to have to figure out exactly what data. Now, you may select session source and it's actually not giving you the number you want, maybe it's off a little. That's where you come in and refine it, okay? So as soon as you put the widget in there, don't assume it's already correct. Verify, like do a manual count. Is this correct in this straight range? Oh yeah, it is correct, so I am tracking the right data. When it comes to advanced settings, you can have it descend, ascend, you can give it limits, the date property, was it created, updated, birth date, last activity. Again, this all depends on what you're trying to track, all right? And you can add comparison date ranges. I prefer to not put any date ranges in so I can change the date on my dashboard and it moves all the data, but you might specifically be looking for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, and boom, it's in there now, okay? now. Of course, I have no data in there, right? But if I ever wanted to, let's say the number isn't lining up, you just go back to edit, all right? And it's gonna bring it up and there's conditions you can add. Let's say you only want to attribute to certain things. You can add filters onto the data. So let's say you only wanted to know contacts that are leads, not customers. You can filter that in a lot of different ways, okay? It gives you tons of options, assigned user, tags, followers. So don't think that you have to have the right widget title to be able to find the data you're looking for. Again, this is gonna be a bit of trial and error as you build this. Any dashboard builder you use, and I've used lots of them like Google Data Studio, I mean, there's a million out there, okay? But the thing about it is you really need to hone in what are the data points that I'm trying to collect and show in one number in real time. If you can identify the data points, then you can filter for it and do all these things and get what you're looking for. You can add a theme onto it if you wanted to add color, like we'll make it blue, right? And when that's done, okay, you also can arrange the size and all those sorts of things, okay? But add whatever you want in here. Here's the biggest thing, all right? Don't forget to hit save. A lot of people like forget to hit save. I could add a whole bunch of other widgets. This is the date range change that I'm talking about here. Okay, if I wanted to see for the last month versus the last week versus the last, you know, three months, you can change your date range in here and every widget in here based on the filters and the parameters and all the stuff that you gave it to go, I want you out of these 100 data points, I want to know, I want you to correlate the data from number one, seven, 92, 65 and 12. And it's going to go, okay, and then it's going to go now do it within this date range. It's really cool. It saves a lot of time but it takes time to set up, I'll be honest with you, and always manually verify when you're setting up. But once it's done, it's set up and it's always working in real time. This is a super powerful piece of information for you if you're a marketing lead, a sales manager, a business owner uh, that needs to oversee all of them. There's a lot of different ways that you can use this to give you real-time data without having to go through and use Google Sheets and count stuff and just you know pull your hair out and waste time doing it manually, okay? But just know it's not gonna be quick, it's not gonna be easy setting it up, but it doesn't have to be hard, all right? Hopefully that doesn't sound contradictory, but it's not. Let's say you wanted to edit the entire board and add a widget. That's what this button here is for. You can add your widget, hit save changes, and it will go back, all right? Lastly, you can clone it, you can duplicate it to another account. So if you're an agency owner and you built a really cool dashboard for a customer and you wanted to duplicate it to another account, you can do that. You can upload your, if you've built the most amazing dashboard template, you could upload it to the community. You can set it as your default dashboard, manage its time zone, manage permissions, or you could delete it altogether. 
All right. So that's dashboards in a nutshell. I know I didn't show you every single option on there, but like I say with anything else and go high level, you learn through doing and you learn through clicking the buttons and spend the time now that you kind of know where all the things are and that you have to first, what am I trying to track? What are the data points I need? You'll be able to get to the answer you're looking for, verify it's working correctly, and then you're done. It never changes. So a super powerful tool. I hope you have fun with it. And I look forward to hearing your questions around this or see if you've built a really cool dashboard, let us know. We'd love to take a look at it if you can send it to us. Again, my name's Eric. This is Teach Go High Level. Check out our other videos and like and subscribe. Thanks.